another primnoid whip. I think these might be um, percentages that we're seeing. Can you repeat that, Jules? Percentages? Percentages. Um, not me right here, but I'll. Next time we pass one, I'll point it out. Okay, and it's spelled weird. It's B R S I N G I D, isn't it? No, it's not. Mercen? B R I S I N G I D. Oh, I left out the an I there. Yeah. For Thank everyone you. who's just who's just tuning All in, in our depth is 1,900 meters. Oh, is that one of our, our dive fat duration ones? is about 20 hours. We hope to recover like tomorrow at 10 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Oh no, that's oh. thanks for tuning in. Around, yeah, hmm. we found some really large holothurians the other day. It was very exciting. That was like my highlight for <laughs> the things we've seen. I just thought they were so cool. It was thrilling. This, I bet, is Bolosoma. Yep. Cool. Does Bolosoma always have that fatter stock? Um, it can. Yeah, I think it tends to be thicker. All right, is this acorn worm territory? <laughs> Hopefully. Looks like it. I do have a question um, for our lead video engineer. Um, for all of our um, students who want to get into the same career path and eventually make their way into ocean exploration, what skills, certifications would you advise them to get or prepare before getting into ocean exploration? Oh, gosh. Um there's a lot of different avenues, like many things. Uh, there's a lot of different specialties that can lead this way. Um, photography is a good one, followed by videography, which are one of the same these days. Uh, learn about uh, how cameras work, uh, how lenses work, and how, um, uh, how video is, is recorded and edited and that kind of stuff. We don't, I don't do an awful lot of that. I'm a, uh, a hardware engineer. I design and build television stations stations, big oh. ones and small ones. Uh, I've uh, been chief engineer of a number of television stations, that kind of stuff. I started in broadcasting, uh, working at a TV station as a technician and worked my way up through. Uh, that's one path. Um, mobile production like sports uh, and events wow. and that kind of stuff. Uh, they're always looking for, um, uh, for people to uh, work on those events as camera operators and uh, engineers and technicians. Like uh, Taylor Swift concerts? Yeah, like Taylor Swift concerts. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Those guys, uh, those guys hogged summer. up all the good jobs. I, I couldn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Um, well, oh, are we zooming in? Okay, we, we are. are. We, we are. Bolosoma. Bolosoma? Yep. So get a camera and practice your zooms. <laughs> <laughs> Can they do it on their own? Do they have to wait for someone to ask for a zoom? <laughs> zoom in, Dave. You could just get a sound bite of Robert saying, zoom in, and yeah. pause. Zoom in, I actually zoom really would like some sound bites from all of you uh, before we leave. <laughs> sort of like a white noise to fall asleep to. <laughs> you can just watch highlights. Bridge now. <laughs> actually, we do have our full dives also online. That's true. 
Oh. <laughs> Disregard bridge that that wasn't me. <laughs> oh, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> no, d disregard bridge. Sorry. Sorry bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Fabio was listening to SPL too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, Fabio. That's like playing with matches. I mean, you can't you can't just shout that out. I feel like he should join SPL. There's no reason why he shouldn't have fun with us. He needs to drive the ship. <laughs> oh, well, you know. Good point. But it's true. Could probably ask him a question. I don't know if he has a mic up there. I guess so. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Special bond somehow. Is that on the radio or over the intercom systems? It's on intercom. It's on intercom. Oh, cap. Well, I would also like to uh, relay the same question to our ROV pilots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for our students um, uh, tuning in, uh, what certification or advice would you give them? Because they do want to join ocean exploration as an ROV pilot. So how, what would your advice be? How do they get to where they're at to here on board Nautilus? Uh, the kind of skills, I think, Wait, hold on. I don't think you're on SPL. Yeah. Oh, I am, but I do have my mic sticking out to the side. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. Technically oriented people mm. that are good with their hands. like. Uh, but, you know, we have a range of skill sets. So, like, we're talking about computer people and... Electrical. Electrical people. Mechanical. Mechanical people. <laughs> people that have to drive ROV. Right. <laughs> for the, and for the software like people, star. there's an there's a operating system or a kind of a robot operating system that's become yeah. the de facto oh. ROS, yeah. Syst oh, oh, that's that's, oh, that's new. Yeah. yeah, that's new to me. Wait, what is that? It's like a coral and a star yeah. together. <laughs> <laughs> it looks fuzzy. This would be the perfect pet for you. True. Oh, that's true. Aww. Should we try and look this thing up? Yeah. Wow. OK, that's let's check. Very unusual. Yeah, Hunt we it down. seen. Not actually. Hunt down the ID. Chat, help us out. Boy, go to main page. <laughs> <laughs> the wee walking happy fish, Chana Cops, Moya, from New Zealand. I think it's Chana Cops. That was the fish. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. not this. Not uh, this one. Let me. So what? Family or sea stars? Sea <laughs> stars are Echinodermata. Echinodermata. Um, mm -hmm. maybe Goniasteridae. That move is about start to there. Do you see any fuzzy ones? Yeah, I think so. Oh, it takes too long. I know it's taking really long to load. Which which uh, echinoderm pages are you on? Okeanos on the Explorer. Right. Yeah. Are you on Goniasteridae? Yep. Goniasteridae. Yeah. And Velvetita. Velvita. Okay. <laughs> I'll have that one load on mine. Okay. Yeah. Sea stars other. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to look at those, but they don't seem to be. Eat. If we can't get it down, just yeah, put it down as asteroid. Yeah. But that might be a sample if we don't if we don't know what it is. Do you think? The yeah, ship maybe. Is up, so we can do that if we need to. Okay. Um, uh, we are set up well for. Oh, it's opening up. Oh. 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 Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that was impressive. Hi, <laughs> Lime. You're getting closer that was and closer. Exciting. 
Yeah, this is very unusual looking. All right, I think we I, need a sample. Uh, yeah, yes. I agree. Is it a slurp? Moya C Hay, potentially. A U N A C O P S. It doesn't look very large, so. No, I think that's a slurp. I think it's small. Yeah. We can slurp it. Okay, so uh, what jar are we on? We are. So, uh, jar. Jar four is oh. taken. Jars one and two have a fine mesh. You want to rotate into position there? Yep. Can do. So jars one or two. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think we have to worry about the mesh. So one or seven is probably fine. If you want to sort of move one jar. Okay. Somehow they got it all the way around to four and back. I have notes that there's also something in the five. Nope, nothing in five. It's not it? in our Is notes. It that one? Okay. Maybe. But seven works perfect. Hi, Minaster. Hi, Minaster. Can I get up? Are you going to look at that one? Yeah. So I think it might be. Uh, I'm trying like to it see if it's going to quite look like that. But yeah, it kind of has those nope. polyp looking. Yeah, like um, good structures around their gonads. Oh, not quite probably as fuzzy. Good. Yeah, right. and it's it. not quite as see-through, like transparent. I think it's hard as yeah. with this angle and the lighting. There's different variations. Um, well, we can definitely add a new photo for this one if we can yeah, identify it. Okay, not thinking Goniaster anymore. Very that was awesome. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. Samantha, we're looking at your screen. It does okay. look like that. Yeah. It looks similar, but not quite the same body shape. Like yeah, that's what I was thinking. Shorter arms on the one that we're looking at. and. Uh, oh. It's already unstrapped. <laughs> okay. You want me to leave this up, Paula? Uh, no, okay. we're good. I got okay. the name. Thank you. Cool. What sample number will this be? This would be sample 142. Oh. We might get to 149. Oh. Robert, what percentage would you like this to come up to? 149. We'll start at like 40 and see how it goes. Seven Looks more. like you might still be attached to the bungees. Oh, oh whoops. That's no good. Boing. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's going to be an issue. Huh. Where is the bungee attached? I think I just grabbed a hold of it. Oh, I see. Right. Still there. Wait, what's going on here? Is it over the top? No, it's not. It's still on your claw. Oh, I think. Yeah. Oh. Looks good now. There you go. Oh, freedom. It's not very great grasp. <laughs> it's very delicate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a teacup. I hate grabbing them by the hose anyway. It's really suboptimal. Backhanded. Tell me when you're ready for suction. We're gonna. Uh, I gotta zoom in on. Zoom in, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Best one yet. Okay, I'm at 10. Oh. Ooh. It's really attached. Mate. Uh, Come on. 60%. Ooh. If he gets in the jar. Thanks for coming with us. Welcome to there the jar. Oh, oh, there you go. Right. Oh. Suction is off. It looks like something from Mario there. Kart. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. You oh. play Mario Kart? Yes, when I was little. Yeah. Okay. It was the best. Yes. Mario Kart, Mario Bros, Mario Party. Super Mario. <laughs> that's a good one. My son plays Super right. Smash there Brothers. We are. Is that one? Was that from when you were a kid? Flush. It's a Mario thing, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Yep. 
They had it on Nintendo you know. 64. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Adam, are you interested in going? So right now we're on 225, which is going to land us in between waypoints two and three. Are you interested in going more upslope to two? Waypoint no, two? no, it's fine. Okay. So the, the notion is if you see the rest of the waypoints, they're kind of yep. scattered to the south. So just get to the edge and then kind of follow it if we're able. There's a Victor Gorgia. Uh -huh. This edge here. Grande. Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay, Roger. But maybe not right where those waypoints are, because it's a little hard to tell where the edge might be. So, like, here-ish? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Oh, there's some more things coming up. That's such a cool coral. Oh, yeah, what's that behind these. it? It looks like umbella pathy is behind it. Yeah, it's short. Okay, we can keep moving. Got a zip. Zipping. Mike, just make sure you're not kicking up any of that dust. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying my hardest not to. <laughs> I could go slower and then we wouldn't kick up any dust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't worry about it. I like dust. Go <laughs> slower. Oh, there's oh, a ton of dust. Top, top. Ooh. Top middle. Top right. Going off frame. Aww. There it is. <gasps> yes. Seen them. <laughs> what? Is that a Chonacops? Yes, it is. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Not that anyone cares, but <laughs> that sponge? was a Sacco Calyx. Thank you. Sponge. <laughs> I, I care. Jules. Thank you. Chama Cops. <laughs> Who is the cutest? <laughs> <laughs> he answered, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and Paula knows. <laughs> yeah. This one looks rather inflated, huh? Yeah. Chama Cops. Chama Cops. Annie, what is the American, American Samoan name for something very round? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's La Poto Poto? La Poto Poto. Yeah, La, la Poto, 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 Poto Poto. Incredible. Oh so God. animal, it's mangu. And then La Poto Poto is like the round. Really round. Mm, okay. <laughs> I like its stance. It does. It does. So cute. Kind of looks like it's smiling from this angle. It's doing a happy dance. It does. <laughs> smiling into the void. Oh. So their uh, lures are modified luminescent fin rays. Wow. Whoa. Nice. We did see the lure yesterday when it swam away from us. Here it's a little hard to see, but it's right in the middle of there. Oh. Oh, we have so a couple of really good videos of this of also on the Nautilus Live website. Right. Awesome. Oh, oh. oh. the juvenile chonacops may be blue and only adults are red or rose colored. Interesting. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh, jet power. Turbo mode. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, there the it's oh, there it is. Out. Ooh. Ooh. Hey. Nice to see you. Thanks for visiting. Okay. The other way around. Well, that was neat. That was. Sacco calyx, you say, huh? Mm-hmm. 
Why do you say it like that? I, I, it's bringing us back. Coming back, full circle. <laughs> And then questions from our viewer. Um, so do more bumps on the rocks equate to older age or more concentration of elements dissolved in the water? Uh, you, I, don't, I don't think I would use the bumps for that purpose, although okay. it, co it could reflect a surface that was more stable for a longer period of time mm. to develop that texture. Um, but definitely not in terms of the concentration of the rare metals. That is more a function of... Zoom in, Dave. Oh, that's interesting. And then there's something else <coughs> that there a, that's cool. Uh, yeah, it is. It's, so it looks like there's a Chrysogorgia up to the right. And then if we zoom, I can tell you if this is a bamboo or primnoid. Is that a benthic siphonophore? Yeah, that's... Is no, that what are they called? Sea dandelions. Sea dandelions. <gasps> but is it really? What? Is it really? Yeah, it is. Can we zoom on it? I'll worry about the coral later. Oh. Yeah, so they are Oh, wow. Snakes. That's beautiful. A sea dandelion. Um, hmm. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, the metal concentration. Yes. Probably related to the uh, composition of the water, including the oxygen concentration. Um, Look at all the shells floating around. Uh -huh. These are so cool. Lila likes these, right? We got it. Got it. Yeah, can we zoom on the whip to the left? Oh, this. Uh, this one right here. Oh, that we started on? I think that. You want to zoom? Yeah. I just want to figure out if it's bamboo or um, primnoid. I don't think that's a uh, coral. Or it looks kind of spongy. Has primnoid vibes to me. Oh, I see. Oh my gosh, they're so dense. It yeah. looks like uh, <laughs> more like a sponge initially. Um, yeah, this is from Noah. Thank okay. you. I don't dare go any further than <laughs> Prim Noah Day. <laughs> Prim Noah Day. Chrysocorcha, Tunicolata. And a squat lobster. I love how delicate they look. Yeah. Hey, we got a zip. Okay. okay. Zip on. Yeah, this is getting good. We're getting lots of rocky outcrop. Whoa. Kind of. Yeah. Okay, time for a move. Bridge, another yeah. Chrysogorgia. I think that was a Metallogorgia that we just passed. Yep. Agreed. Three zero meters, two two five. What's the bungee there for? It's to hold the hose on because it was getting loose. Huh. And actually, the the it, it got stuck in the thruster. It got so loose. Oh, lovely. Yeah. It does seem like it's not really sticking to that plate very well. Yeah.
We need better magnets. Yeah. So the bungee solved the whole magnet issue, though. Is that it? Yeah, because you can put that over it and keep it in place. There. Oh, look at that. But it, you Sorry, know, that's if you, if very you put exciting. the bungee <laughs> over <laughs> it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if you put the bungee over it, it won't take off. So we put it on when we're going to come up. I see. To stow it. Arm's a little twitchy there. Yeah. <coughs> it's not me. It's, it's doing its own thing. Yep. Definitely Atalanta. <laughs> <laughs> Oldest craft arm in operation. <laughs> Still okay. Yeah. Okay, anything else here, science, to look at? Uh... Oh, the ship has stopped. I I'm don't set. I don't think so. I don't see any real grabbable rock kind of situation there. Nope. Let's go. Okay. That is very cool. That was very cool. I'm excited to see when her comes up and you guys process the samples, I'm excited to see. Me too. Ready to move ROV? Indeed. Bridge, Nev. He's not responding now. Mm -hmm. uh, three zero meters, two two five. Yeah. Where the, the boy who cried wolf. Yes. <laughs> boy who cried bridge now. Oh nope. no, I did Stop. it again. I did it again. Stop sorry, it. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Chat, we are currently 1895 meters. It's like saying the hey Google thing. Currently <laughs> yeah. 1895 meters. Play ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say the first part. Does anyone have any <laughs> trouble communicating with their digital assistant yeah I've never figured out how to my wife says I swear the exact same words I say <laughs> and it does not respond <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy I've turned mine off all of them I, I, yeah, I don't like it, it. I it find it handy yeah. in the car that I use it I yeah. Don't, yeah. never it's, have never will it's just too disturbing when it when it Apparently, is reading your mind, you know? <laughs> like, I don't think that's a feature yet. But. <laughs> no, it is. That's the AI, like, it, it listens to so much of what you're doing and yeah. figures it out. Oh, I don't know that the Apple one is listening unless you yes. tell it to. It's, it's always right. listening. Everything's listening. Yeah, everything's listening. WhatsApp is listening. Facebook your is listening. Washing machine is listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's a piece of washing machine. <laughs> it can't. It can't hear me. You when I put that tinfoil hat on, <laughs> nothing can get me. Oh, look at that slab. Ship That's move underway. Sweet sample. It's not coming up. You can put it on top. Maybe it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Roof rack. Do we have a bungee cord in there? <laughs> Has Herc ever done ratchet straps underwater? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oldest operating craft arm, also first ratchet straps underwater. Yeah, I haven't operated a ratchet strap. But there was a ever. Pretty cool. No, the manipulator. I w the uh, recovery of Hercules was pretty cool in terms of using tools. Yeah, it was. Did you need it to use like a whole ROV to get Hercules again, or Correct. how was that recovery? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, because Hercules yeah. got stuck on the bottom there, and, and oh. another ROV came, and uh, they had to screw a ratchet or a, a shackle together. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. Was yes. Shackle. Yeah, Jeez. that was really impressive. And they brought a bandsaw down. Yeah. So okay, the yeah. bigger story, and this is also on the Nautilus Live website, was that um, Hercules and 
Argus uh, detached from the 6-8 cable, the cable that connects to the ship, off of the coast of Vancouver Island in British Columbia. We were doing operations with um, our partners at Ocean Networks Canada at the time. Um, we got really, really lucky in that the University of Washington's Thomas G. Thompson research vessel was nearby, um, and on board was the ROV Jason team from Woods Hole. And they, as a everyone on the ship, agreed uh, that they were going to extend their already month-long expedition another week to be able to help us. Wow. So again, we got super, super lucky. They were able to come within a week on site. Wow. And they sent down ROV Jason to uh, first cut uh, with a bandsaw, cut the tether between Hercules and Argus. Hercules floated to the surface, and then we were able to um, pick it up with a small boat and then uh, crane Hercules back on board. And then they went down again with lift straps um, and the shackle that Robert mentioned and uh, attached the lift straps to Argus. And then we reattached Argus to the 6-8 cable and then we were able to winch that back on board ourselves so what, what had to be cut with a knife because i remember being like oh just twist the knife just a little bit <laughs> that way yeah there was some like spectra yeah the, the uh it was the lift line it was the lift yeah. line but uh, i think they might have done it with bandsaw and then yeah the bandsaw was used to cut the tether the tether yeah oh the lift line had to be cut first yeah, yeah. and then the bandsaw yeah, because we had, you know, it was all daisy chained together. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it was an incredible operation, and we were streaming it. Uh, we were streaming the cameras from Jason here in the control van, which was even more interesting seeing Hercules head on from an angle that we normally mm -hmm. do not. Um, and yeah, Hercules and Atalanta were just, or Hercules and Argus, finally, <laughs> is that Atalanta? <laughs> Hercules and Argus were just sitting there on the seafloor, like we had just gently placed them there. So we got incredibly lucky, nothing was damaged. Um, and they were back in operation a week later for the rest of the season. And I will note that I had to load Little Herc and oh, Atalanta yeah. in my truck. Oh my gosh, oh, wow. yeah, you did. I drove from <laughs> Los Angeles to Port Angeles, Washington. Yeah. What? <laughs> in yeah. two days to, yeah, <laughs> Epic to get road trip. aboard. <laughs> did you get Epic any road trip. weird looks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were just in a box, right? Yeah, they, they were. Yeah. yeah, I remember that crate. It was, yeah. <laughs> quite a time but yeah we've got a series of um, blog updates and a video about that um, that ROV rescue which was quite something to be a part of and yeah incredibly grateful to the Thompson team the Jason team and all of our partners who rallied together in the oceanographic community in a very short amount of time to make that happen it's a pretty powerful moment I was sitting at home and watched the whole thing all yeah. the way through. Like yeah. What? I was sitting here on the ship. It was like. Yeah, that's a good point. We also absolutely streamed. Absolutely fascinating. Yeah, except for that first um, few hours of the first Jason dive, we actually streamed it all live too, which was, um, I think, a really powerful opportunity for folks to be able to see how much goes into operations like this, and when things go wrong, how much collaboration it takes to. Well, there was a recover. there was a Jason stream yeah. from the Thompson as well, and I, yeah. I was watching that uh, as well as our stream. Yeah. As uh, well as talking to my counterpart, Ed, uh, over our V-Link system while they were doing it. So, pretty amazing. Yeah, the only damage was a, a little scratch on Argus's camera lens. Yeah. Oh. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh, got distracted. Bridge nav. Let's do another three zero meters two two five. That's a really cool view of Herc. So you can imagine if uh if Argus broke loose while it was right directly above her, that would be Ooh. bad. Yeah. So we got lucky there. Well, there's a lot of luck. Hmm. 
Was there a time where an ROV couldn't be recovered? Yep. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think, uh, uh, what was it called? Hyper Dolphin? Or was it Keiko? Keiko. 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 The Japanese, full, it was full ocean depth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very high-tech, expensive ROV. And then, of course, Nereus. Nereus. Yeah. That was a full ocean depth uh, ROV that the flotation kind of imploded in the oh. deck trench. And I'm trying to think what else. There was one that was lost up off of BC, and the the U.S. Coast Guard found it like a week later or something, oh, floating yeah. off off yeah. the Oregon coast. What about when ISIS got caught in the prop of the ship? I don't know if it detached or not. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Well, Jason was in in a dire situation as well, huh? When that the cable started to unravel when it was in the water, yeah. There's lots of close calls. Uh, yeah, there was when we did the launch and with uh, Medea and Jason, and it yeah, and the cable parted and fell overboard. That was a very close call. That almost. Killed some people there. Oh wow! Yeah, generally the the theme is that if you're going to throw something overboard, you have to be prepared for it to not come back. But thankfully, that's few and far between. Yeah. Also, the theme with a couple of these is full ocean depth. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And very expensive. I'm saying it's the cost of the instruments is exponentially higher the deeper you go. Uh, just a side note, I actually am looking for sea pens, so oh, let me know if you see anything while we're in this uh, large, expansive sand. Okay. All eyes on sand. <laughs> I think... I think we should probably not call it sand. Sediment. Oh. Sediment. 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 And why is that, Adam? Uh, well, it could be sand, because sand is really uh, kind of a grain size indicator more than anything mm -hmm. else. Um, but it is very different stuff than Mm -hmm. What we colloquially call sand, you know, at the beach, which is made up of bits of coral and rock and uh, stuff like that. Right. This is mostly f organic matter that's fallen down through the water column. Mm -hmm. It gets stirred up by Atalanta. <laughs> 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 Every time. Always. <laughs> see me <laughs> just tossing <laughs> sediment over the top of her. <laughs> what was what was your superpower, Mike? I was teleporting. <laughs> Teleportation. Yeah, you teleport down there, <laughs> stir up the sand. Yeah. No, I, just I mean, sand. I, I got an ROV. I don't need to teleport at this <laughs> point. <I'm> just <laughs> scoop up with Atalanta and sprinkle over the top of her. <laughs> just yeah. say Atalanta has done some, some sediment sampling. Really? It does not have any arms, though. No, oh, that's like a like the toe cam. <laughs> oh wait, I remember. The toe cam that I've done some accidental rock and sampling. sand sampling. <laughs> yes. Not, not, not on this cruise. Not no. on this cruise. No. It's not on this long. watch. Dunk, dunk. <laughs> yeah. And then we have a viewer, a question from the viewer so about. The left next to the shrimp. Oh, what? What happened? What? Or is that false alarm? Uh, no, to the right of the shrimp. To the right, right? of the shrimp. Is that something? Where is the shrimp? On the left. <laughs> <of the shrimp. laughs> uh, it's all the way down. All the way down. <laughs> no, I guess that might be a false alarm. Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Okay, false like, alarm. Like almost impossible, even. Nope, it's nothing. Look like the shadow of a sea pen. 
Yeah, also we can move at like a, a normal speed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I meant that. Bridge now. <laughs> Respectfully. I just meant we don't have to like comb through, you know? Three zero like, we'll meters to drive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Join us, Deb. <laughs> we do have a question from the viewer about um, when Herc and Argus detached. Um, have you, well, have they fi have they worked out why Herc and Argus detached? That's the question. They went on strike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the termination failed. Oh, okay. So the cable pulled out of the termination. So the manufacturer of the, the, the termination uh, looked at it a lot, and they sent a rep out to like go over our procedure and how we put the, the terminations together. Uh, they had sort of we developed a new plan for how to do that. But there was no like obvious reason for it to fail, right? So, but we're we're more cautious about how it's done, and we monitor it really closely to see if it's moving at all, like between dives. So it's got some paint marks on it to see if it's moved. Yeah. And by Thank termination, you. Robert, like, literally means where the cable attaches to yeah. Argus. There's like, a, right. a metal yeah. fitting hey. that goes over the cable. Well, let's take a look at this area. Ooh. Is that oh, a rat tail? Oh. It's start, starting to pull on me. <coughs> Cusk. There's some grabbable potatoes and stuff there. <laughs> Robert, just so you know, I think we're getting close to the end of our time here. Yeah. Yep. Just as an FYI. Deb, are you an just SPO? Shh, I'm hiding in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to welcome Join us. Deb to the She's got to answer the question. We have to answer oh, the yeah. Question. Introduce yourself and yep. pick a superpower. A superpower. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what you cannot choose. Oh, no. Wait, <laughs> Flight. Okay. Breathing underwater. Okay. Talking with animals. Healing. Okay. Healing. Invisibility. Oh. oh, man, that's the one I would have chose. With invisible clothes. <laughs> with invisible clothes. Teleportation. <laughs> what about with a cape? Can I just have a cape that's invisible? No, no that was judged to uh, not be a superpower. That's just ownership. Shape-shifting. Uh, <laughs> Shape-shifting and super, super speed. Wait, did you say like seeing through walls? Nope. No. Seeing through what? There it is. Like uh, X-ray oh, vision. Oh. Whoa. Introduction. So, yeah. Introduction. Who are you? Oh right. Who are, Who uh, are you? I went with superpower first. That's more important. <laughs> uh, hi everybody. My name is Deb. I am the mapping coordinator on this um, amazing expedition with all these fine people here. Um, wow. Basically. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Our team of amazing navigators also uh, <laughs> sit watch <laughs> for multi beam mapping, and uh, then we take the, all of that uh, great data and turn it into some cool maps. And then I get to um, work with the expedition leader and our science leads and anybody else who feels like popping into the data lab and um, look at what we've mapped overnight and pick a new dive area. So we did all of that this morning at I don't know, after breakfast time. And um, and now we get to climb up this mountain. So um, I, this is my first time on Nautilus. Woo -woo. I have spent the last 20 years at various sea types on different ships, doing various types of mapping, shallow water, deep water, um, all of that. So yeah, yeah thanks for letting me pop in. Um, most of the places that we have 
uh, dived are places that haven't been mapped before. So we have to map them first so we know what the shape of the seafloor is, how deep it is, and all that. So that's critical step in you know what you see coming across the the internet is to know what the seafloor looks like first. Yeah, and even if we do have maps, I mean, I think that's one of the things we did at the you know one of the things I did at the beginning of this expedition was sort of compile together all of the various different um, resources we have out there and not everything is in one place so it can be quite um, yes. quite tricky to figure out who's been where over this area um, and what it does exist for data and it's one of the what things that um, it wasn't anything a lot <laughs> of different people are working on right. trying to make that easier but yeah so we put it all together and the resolutions are mixed and so we might not have the best resolution to dive um you know hercules is mm, what four square meters maybe five square meters uh, it's like a small mini cooper <laughs> yeah i think less than <laughs> less than that yeah so most of the maps that we do are still um 20 30 meter grids and so um you can most of what we get um, and download is 90 to 100 meters so um, we barely are seeing the shapes of rock. So we do tend to do a, a, some remapping just so that we can safely put the vehicle on the side of a seamount and see if there are any major obstructions. But for the most part, there a lot of these haven't been mapped on the top at least. So we've been doing that on this expedition. So it, when you say that the areas are mapped, like is there a, like a, you have to achieve some level of resolution to consider it mapped? Um, no, we consider pretty much any coverage mapped, but it's it's the usability of that coverage. So there are multiple places that you can go and see that bathymetry. So NOAA's NCEI's um, repository and um, the GMRT global um, multi-resolution multi -resolution surface. So you can actually extract out grids from both of those and see what coverage. And then most of that takes a can take up to a year or two to get into those um, combined surfaces. So for example, Nautilus was down here last year. And um, so we had to compile both what we pulled from GMRT and NCEI and then what we had on board um, okay. and then pull data from any other ship we know has been here. So like the Kilimawan has been here um, and some others. So all of that data can be in various resolutions and it, and because to make a global map you tend to do it at a, a sort of what they call large small scale so 100 meters but i don't have the you would have to have the raw data robert in order to get it to be a smaller resolution to like dive on so i think any of that would be considered mapped um but we tend to sometimes remap just so we have a better resolution to build these dive plans on but when they say that, like, you know, 80 percent's, like, not mapped, like, that's sort of just referring to it's not mapped at a, at a, at a high enough resolution? No, no, at all. So right now we just, I think IHO just in the last month announced that we're 25 percent of the oceans are mapped. So um, that is having some sort of coverage or knowledge that is... Hey, sorry to interrupt, but are we in the middle of a move? We are at 13 meters left. You want to stop? Could we start a rock? Yeah. yeah. Bridge, no? Were you looking right? Laser, yeah, right. Yeah. Laser range? Yep. Yeah. yeah, either one there, right. there. Hold there. position. All Yeah, MB proc should have this dive on it. I'll put um, I'm gonna put it up here so I can move it. Um, yeah, so 25%, Robert, back to your question, 25% of the oceans are mapped, meaning that there is some higher resolution content r rather than satellite altimetry Yeah. Um, is mapped. So there's still quite a bit of 
you know, 75% not mapped. If you go to some of those global resources like NCEI or GMRT and you look at the page when you first get there, it can show you all of those, what is there and what isn't. And there's still quite a bit of black space that we have not. Do you think that includes like old sea beam data that's like, nah? Um, some of it is in and some of it isn't. I think that is part of what, like, I know the group um, at Lamont Doherty with GMRT has done, like, determining some of it just isn't great and they've pulled it out. I think NOAA, when you look at their page, if it is in the archive somewhere, then it's there. And you can actually zoom in and say, oh, that looked like they had a really bad weather day and they didn't clean their data because that grid that you see at NOAA's website isn't cleaned. It's just all the data if pulled it exists, in, it if it exists, and it's how it exists in their archive is how you see it. Yeah. Um, where GMRT tends to be cleaned first and then combined, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was like great um, or matches up with existing data and potentially has still artifacts in it. And so we see that too, like there's some of the data actually on top of this seamount <coughs> has some artifacts in it and so that also makes it challenging when you're looking at something very um, small scaled and then also with holes in it. So somebody has to that's vet fun. all that data and say that's all legit? Yeah of, I mean yeah. it's it's sort of amalgamated over time there's typically somebody involved with any particular mapping Thank survey you for this bin. that that hey, that's going? Uh, let's go side bin Is there anything floating in the... Nothing's in there at all. Okay. Oh, look. Oh, Minesweeper. Yeah. I was wondering what this was. Oh, wow. Is that worth zooming on? Okay, ready for sample salvo? Probably sample amazing. salvo. Fire the salvo. <laughs> look at that. That's amazing. Oh, wow. Good. Can Good we get the, the other sample. view? The other view? Yeah. Got it. You got it. So you go to the cameras, and then you go starboard yeah. bio box and turn off port uh, rail. Cameras. Turn off. OK. Yeah. yeah. Is that better? All right. Box out? Yep. All right. Kirk Hydraulics box is going out. Uh, Let's go A, B, C, or D. Oh, or is that too big? Uh, go E or F. Go E or F. Oh, don't try it. You're going to get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get out once it's like halfway in. I guess it's pretty huge. Oh, nice. Let's hey, go. Sample tray going in. Probably left. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Bio box is closed. Ready to go back to dive yeah. salvo? Okay. Dive okay. salvo. Kind so of a rock box for now. So, so do we have the good salvo that I can see the down facing camera here instead of all those big huge gauges? Yep. Is that working? Yep, it is. It's the one at the Oh, it's not not working. What? That yeah, one's that's down true. facing. Oh no, it is working. Yep. Minesweeper. Oh yeah, right in the between the lasers. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> I just saw one sort of like against oh, yeah. the rock. Oh yeah. Maybe zoom on that. Minesweeper. Yeah. Yeah. Zoom and you'll the see. The radiolarian protists. Dave's waiting for Robert to say it. <laughs> say zoom. <laughs> Can you zoom, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out what to zoom on. Right there. there it down. Is. Right. right. Down wow. Down. What? It got pan down. Tilt, pan down. Tilt down. Tilt down. There it is. It's on the seafloor. It's tumbling underneath the rock. A mine sweeper. 
It's that little radial area in our protest that we saw oh, in the water column a couple of weeks ago. more like a mine than yeah, a mine that sweeper. A mine sweeper. <laughs> wow. That's full zoom right there. Great shot. Mine sweeper. That's so cool. Oh, I see it now. I was just seeing sand. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It's like a dust bowl. Which way is oh, yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> it's becoming a part of you. <laughs> no, sometimes you get a ground fault on the box. And, and you can tell because touch, it touches, touches you. your bare yeah. skin and you get zapped. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Keeps you alive. That's great. <laughs> what are we? I get That's the same thing out. with the iPhone charging cables on yeah. here on 220. <laughs> so pushes just enough coffee. through. <laughs> Science, anything else here that you want to take a look at before we continue on? No, ma'am. No, we're good. Okay. So on uh, SatFeed 3 at home, you'll see uh, we can continue the mapping discussion a little bit if you like. Yeah. Great. Deb's got a little show and tell here for us. Perfect. Okay. So, so oh, you got out ahead before we go. <laughs> this is Earth. <laughs> so this is the planet Earth <laughs> where we live. <laughs> This computer is a little slow because I just opened this very large uh, project, so bear with me. Um, the pink line that you see was uh, Nautilus's track when we left Honolulu. And you can uh, zoom in to um, pretty much everything's turned on. So um, see where we've been um, and what we've done. Um, but we are, so this is uh, the yellow borderline is the USEEZ. The red box is the um, monument, and we are just over here on this seamount, just outside the monument, and diving um, in this corner. And for some reason, coverage is not coming up, so I'm going to switch. But like we are, um, so as you can like see, this is existing coverage. The green and blue lines yeah, kind of squiggled all over, um, and I only have certain areas um, brought in. Um, but this is the existing coverage in this area. And if we switch is this a type to of this is how it Fleeter Mouse, you can see um, you. this is, again, what we have. Wow. And so when we map, we bring in some new coverage. And so we've covered the uh -huh. holes here. Um, and this current dive, so yesterday's dive, if you tuned in, was on this little mound here in the middle of this data. And then today we're off here on this uh, southeastern ridge. And the orange track is the proposed dive area. Um, so as you can see, there's various quality levels of um, data that we get when we pull in other people's grid. And some of that's due to the weather that they saw. Um, as you can see, uh, there's lots of gaps and holes in some of it. Um, some of it, they probably, as they were running south on this line, didn't have great weather. Um, the bit of the seamount to the north that we dove on a few days ago was mostly mapped, so we actually didn't do too much mapping up there ourselves. We ran one line over, and as you can see, actually, this lighter color, the colored difference is our data. There's a gap in between it because we came to the spot, dove, and then left, um, and so we actually didn't map over that because that data was pretty good. Um, so there's a little tour of what we are doing right now on this seamount. And I think we've just gotten to almost nearly the top edge of this. Are we at waypoint two yet, Samantha? Oh, I can't hear you. Oh, Cuskeel. Oh, no, I think you're on SPL. I don't yeah, I'm listening I'm to not SBL. SBL. I'm here. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> there you go. Good news, Samantha. No, I am. Uh, Ooh, fish and groupie. a halosaur. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a halosaur. Oh. Uh, a fish party. A custom <laughs> and a halosaur. So Whoa. Good man, Dave. Huh. That's a new one. Usually they're very solitary. Do they go after the same type of uh, prey? That's a good Not question. Sure. I'm just wondering why that we're seeing them together. It's like a celebrity sighting. Yeah. It's like, 
Timothy, French last name, and Kylie Jenner seen together leaving the coffee shop. Coskale and Hellasaur spotted above sediment. Okay, so <laughs> Coskales eat crabs and mollusks. Let's check for the other one. Oh, this is great in the still cam. Hello, my friend. Um, that ship move is starting. Okay. They don't. I don't know. I think it was a chance encounter there. Might have been. A meet cute? You might have cute. Drawn in by the light. What's this thing? Cuscu. <laughs> really great still cam shots of this thing. I'm very excited. Look at that model. Nice. Why does it have that kind of lumpy part? Do they all have that? Yeah. Around their face? Yeah. Yeah, the kind of smoother skin. Yeah, most of them do, I believe. I don't know if that's one of the species in the Cuscale family and the Ophididae family, but. Hey, moving on. Moving on. Uh, and Deb, in answer to your question, we are heading uh, kind of in between <laughs> waypoint two and waypoint three. Cool, okay. Doesn't it look like it kind of has like a nervous smile? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking right. at a picture of it, like way zoomed in. Well, first time on camera, it's always <laughs> just act natural. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. We do have a question about like maps so how much onboard storage is there for maps where do you store your is it terabytes no okay. deep water mapping actually doesn't take a lot of space the video from oh. this rov dive is about <laughs> probably eight times more of it data than the mapping is if probably not more so um mapping is shallow water mapping um takes a lot of space and yeah it can be up into the terabytes of data now um but um, we're usually a few hundred gigs per expedition, depending on how much we've mapped. Um, so, you know, it's anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 meters deep, and that takes sound, you know, a little bit of time to travel down and come back. Okay. And so if you think about that in the shallow water, you can ping a lot faster and collect a lot more data and a lot higher resolution. So um, we're not quite as... Well, this is a different heavy. species. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you. Yeah, no worries. That's look. Video files from this dive be on the order of two terabytes. Yeah. Two, three terabytes, somewhere in there. So 20 to 30 times yeah. all the mapping data collected on the cruise. Wow. Yeah. And that's only one dive. That's per dive. Per dive. What? Oh my God. <laughs> per <Wow>. dive. <laughs> so yeah, we're not we're not quite getting yeah, the anywhere video near that. Video dwarfs yeah. every other data collection. Yeah. Bridge nav. We can add three zero meters to the step two two five. So we may we may have to be making some decisions here pretty soon. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. What kind of decisions? Um. <laughs> Directional. We're approaching some <laughs> rockiness. Are we? Have we have we gone up, gotten to the top of this seamount? Well, we have not. We're, we're on the last remaining kind of. S it's getting less steep as we go up. Okay. What's really interesting from the the 3D model that uh, Deb has there is how, what a tiny little part that we're looking at. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. right. You know, That's compared true. to this huge uh, thing that we've mapped and uh, and modeled, and uh, and we're you know a little teeny corner down there, 
Yeah, yeah. and if you like fly in, I think um, Hercules is probably smaller than the blue dots um, yeah. wow. because we are probably somewhere right around that light blue line. I think if I kind of guesstimate from uh, where the position of the vehicle is. Yeah. Um, so yeah. All, okay. So all of your um, mapping data is this available to the public? You're yeah, so all the mapping data that Nautilus collects is um, is available, um, especially if the cruise has been funded by um, OECI and other um, government agencies. Um, so you can um, go to R to R, Rolling Deck to Repository is um, where the bathymetry data goes, and then onto MGDS, and then eventually onto NCEI. So. Um, if you go to uh, NCI, which is National Environmental Centers of Information, um, there's actually a, if you go to, if you just Google NOAA bathymetry, um, they have a great map resource and you can zoom in and you can actually search for specific cruises and expeditions mm -hmm. um, and see track lines from all over the world from different ships. Um, and Nautilus data does go there as well. Okay. Awesome, yeah. thank you. It takes a bit of time to get through the pipeline. Um, so data from last year is just making its way through. So it's not something you can go and download tomorrow. It, it right. definitely is a process between getting all of the data from the ship to shore and then QC'd and through all the various different institutes and pipelines. But um, but yeah. And then I think if, you know, if scientists or other ex um, researcher needs it, they can always reach out to Ocean Exploration Trust and request the data as well. Adam, how does mapping data influence your work as a geologist? Yeah, geologist, volcanologist, uh, volcano specialist. <laughs> so, lots of ways. So, bridge now. The uh, kind of ship-based mapping data gives me a sense for the overall shape of the seafloor. Often the things I want to look at are at uh, smaller length scales. There's a really large Saco calyx uh, sponge. So oftentimes I'll use vehicles that can get closer to the seafloor for mapping, like an AUV. Um, oftentimes if I'm looking at a more recent eruption, there'll be some data from before the eruption and after the eruption, so you can see how the seafloor has changed. You can estimate the volume of material that was erupted. Um, gives you a, a great, and there's been a few examples with submarine eruptions, which generally we don't see in real time, so we have mm -hmm. to go after the fact, but to see where new material is versus old material. And look at, we'll also look at kind of how the pre-existing bathymetry influenced where material went on the seafloor. It can be in the form of lava flows or, or density currents, you know, like sediment laden density currents. Um, it's essentially critical because it allows you to extrapolate your observations that are at a very, very fine scale out to the scale of a volcano, you know, and, and Bathymetry is one of the primary tools you have for doing that. Yeah, and even larger than that, right? It sort of shows you how all of the forces going into that activity kind of influence the areas, larger areas around it, and all of the subsequent features that come with that. Yeah, like this area, the Line Islands, is a chain of seamounts that stretches thousands of miles and shot. have you know, some twists and turns in the in the chain and people use that not just to understand these volcanoes and how they form, but how the whole Pacific plate and, and really all the plates have been moving around through time. So 
Huntsville, if you look at a map of the Pacific Ocean, one of the most prominent volcanic chains is the Hawaiian Emperor Seamount chain. Oh, right. Oh, there's a bathy pathies. And you'll see a big kink in it. And that big kink is a is a change in direction of the Pacific plate that... Uh, Science, do you want to zoom on this coral or just... Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I, we no. know what that one is. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what this, that one is. This one would be good. I'm guessing it's a primnoid. Adam, Deb's showing that uh, feature on... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's fascinating. Three. This is amazing. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what exactly the plate reorganization was that was the cause of that. But I think it was... Jeez, I'm not really good? sure. Yeah, we're good. Thanks. Oh, little sponge. <laughs> Okay, we're getting into it now. Nice. Yeah, look at these pillow lavas. Now we're talking. Just as you were thinking you needed to do something different. I know. Gorgia <laughs> and Anthemastus. The good stuff's always just ahead. A primnoid whip down there. Where oh, over there. It was over there, yeah. And what causes on um, pillow lavas? Pillow lavas, that's a great question. Um, so, submarine lavas come out the same temperature that they do on land. It's about 1200 degrees Celsius. But instead of erupting into air, they erupt into seawater, which happens to be a fantastic um, heat sink. So both the water is quite cold, but also it's very, uh, very good at convecting. And so it bring cold, hot water goes away, brings in new it's cold crazy. water. So it cools the lava very quickly. If the lava is moving pretty slowly, it'll form a crust before it really has a chance to uh -huh. flow that far. And the crust will get strong enough to hold the lava in place in this kind of pillow or balloon shape. And then the balloon will break in a little place and a new balloon will form. And you basically build balloon after balloon or pillow after pillow. But if the lava is going faster, that crust oh, still the, forms at the, the same rate. Pathies. What, this one? Uh, there's a Chrysogorgia, Geniculata, and a Umbellopathies behind it. Yeah. Okay with the DVL reset? Yeah. If the lava's... Oh, I see it, yeah. yeah. If the lava's uh, flowing faster, that crust cooling is not as effective at stopping it, so it starts to spread out. And so there's a few classifications of lava morphology going from small pillows out to broad sheets that can tell you something about how fast the lava was coming out. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. Adam, is pillow lava and lobate the same? Lobate is like a bigger pillow. It's coming out faster. Okay. Mm. So a big flat pillow. And then a sheet is like a one continuous long wide pillow. What is that? Which one? This one? Is that a rock? <coughs> Circle? Uh, I'm not sure. Where? The is it a is it a beak? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> How's that look, doesn't it? That looks pretty bony. Oh Canada does. Do we have a fossil? Ooh. That does look very beaky, actually. Looks like that top part of a skull, like a big whale skull. Dang. Are we good. grabbing the it? Oh, Damn it. it. Down the middle. Grab it. Let's go. <laughs> the ship has stopped already, yeah, so we are yeah. good. You know it's exciting when Annie changes the intonation <laughs> of the, <laughs> the let's go. Yeah. 
Wow. I wonder what happens when Annie's like somewhere where she doesn't want to be. She's like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> This would be sample 144. Right Ooh, 144. Four. Four. See if you can get one right when he pulls it up. Yeah. Five more. Yes. Where is this going to go? Um, they've fit in the front without too much trouble, but maybe, I don't know. Well, there it's is like a tree stump. 10, 20, Ooh. 30, 40, like uh, 45. That's pretty cool. No, come on. I, did, I didn't trust that. Yeah, I don't know about that. That measurement there. <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> okay, there's 10. 10. <laughs> 10. <laughs> this is like how He's when I measure way. something. 30. <laughs> well, it's like 45. 45. <laughs> well, you, you wiggled at the end. All right. And I'm 5'11". I'm, uh, <laughs> this is like when you use your fingers to measure. <laughs> of course, they don't move. All right. Where are we putting it? <laughs> I know, it's crazy. It's amazing. They're, they're all over. All right, uh, I think what's bigger, the front or the side? I know, big ones? right? Well, it just looks I like mean, a tree stump uh, to me. You have to go like diagonal in the box. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you try the front and, and we'll just kind of see if it, you, right. can, you know, you can kind of like measure it against the box. I guess we got to have known dimensions. <laughs> well. Well, you just use the lasers. Ten, no, I 20. mean, the, the boxes prior <laughs> boxes. to. We do have no dimensions. Do we? I mean, we know that. <laughs> Someone knows them. Someone knows Someone them. Knows them. <laughs> <laughs> they might actually be on our website. Hold on. <coughs> You're the ROV guy. You ready for uh, <laughs> toolbox out? I'm not the fountain of knowledge on the <laughs> box sizes. Yep. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go, here we go. I got it. Uh, forward sample tray, inboard and outboard. Wait. There's not inboard and outboard on the forward. Oh, you're looking at sample tray, not toolbox? Oh, toolbox. Yeah. Toolbox. Tool tray. Well, tool tray. Okay, our what's website. Called? What's it called? Tool tray. Tool tray. Well, In the GUI. our website says 45 centimeters. Of what? Dimension. Di diagonally? No. Uh, Do the math. Do the math. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. I thought you were just going to try it. A pl squared plus yeah. B squared. <laughs> well, if you stick it on there and it's 45, that's what you measured. So you Wait, know what you did you say? Right. What did you say the dimension? 45 <laughs> centimeters by 33 by oh, 25. Oh, well, there you go. Go right in. <laughs> we right, do have the two. The box. Right. Opening, <laughs> opening box. <laughs> Uh, but I don't know how, I don't think that's with, with the acrylic oh in geez, there. Oh, jeez, there's a potato. That's an urchin, oh. urchin king. That would, does look like it uh, might fit. Maybe. Could be. I think these might be old dimensions, too. That is not going to fit. <laughs> I think it is. Can you do the thing not where you go diagonally and then it sticks out the top? Oh. Oops, you want to uh, get... Okay. Yanking on me. Uh, I'm going down. I'm just you know what? Just <laughs> toss the cliff. Toss those uh, acrylic boxes. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. Overall, maybe, but you know. Whoa. It's not. It's not gonna. Can you do the diagonal? It's not gonna. It's not gonna happen. We gotta make it happen. Props now's for finding where we, this. Now's where we A-team this thing and. What about the diagonal where it sticks out the top? Well. <laughs> you got that bungee cord on the front. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to just ride out in front, do you? Well, I want it somewhere. 
if you put it out front, can you still open this box? We want, it, you'll get it, you'll figure. <laughs> oh, is this the top or the bottom of the skull now? That's the, the base. It is, the, yeah, okay. When we first saw it, it looked like the top, but that's, yeah. Nice. There's a lot going on here. Are we dropping it in? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I would maybe try and place it in. Place it in. Mm. With care. Oh. Uh, Down it goes. There. Or I could uh, totally botch this whole operation. Well, you this got it. You got this, Robert. You got it. A little finger stuck in there. Yeah. Uh. Jammed up hard here. Yeah. Well, this is I how not to do it. Okay. Know. <laughs> it's in there, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's progress. Like a glove. Uh, That's not going to close very if your much. Glove yeah. was a is little it all bit too there? small. push it over to the corner. I think yeah, that is as diagonal as it gets. Nuts. So. 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 Let's see. What else do we got? Can There's the magnum arm hold it? In the starboard side, but there's only a rock, so we can leave it open. The okay. starboard side, I think, are smaller bins than this. Mm -hmm. Is it? I guess. Yeah, I think diagonally. Yeah, I think this is as big as it gets. Okay. Is there? Is there? Uh, <coughs> let's see. I mean, I mean, uh, we could put it on the porch and uh, hold it down with the magnum arm. But yeah. It's kind of. Going to be annoying being stuck out there yeah, right. the whole time. You can put it in the magnum arm like a jousting spear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> Unicorn horn. Do you think if you push it over to the left corner a little bit, it would actually fit in? I don't think so, mm -hmm. because I think okay. the back, in this instance, the back is already in the left. Yeah. The right, yeah. Or the right, I'm sorry, yeah. Can you look down at the bubble cam and see? We're it's totally really camera. close. Yep. Yeah, where's where's the rope that Adam mentioned? <laughs> the bungee? The bungee rope. Uh, does it look like it's in the all the way in the back corner there? I think you're going to have to spin around. The, the you can see it on the pilot camera, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah, in the yeah, back corner? Yeah, it's tell. in the bottom corner, but your top piece isn't all the way to the left. I think that's oh, where you're missing the angle. There's, there's oh, it's all the way to the there. left in the, in the acrylic yeah, box. Oh, because it's split in half. Yeah. Sorry. That's what I was missing, the acrylic part. Okay. It's a nice bubble cam tour, except for the blowout. Okay, you can, yeah. And then oh, if you can turn the down the volume there. Turn down the volume. Ooh. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all the way, all way in. in the corner. Okay. <coughs> Stick in potato. I think that the front is the only way. I mean, it could ride along and then, you know, when we come up, we can put the magnum on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can it's we not gonna, I don't think it's going to fall off if we just put it. We could kind of bungee it a little bit to keep it there while we're driving. Bungee it? Yeah, you got that bungee for the... <laughs> for the <laughs> That's for the slurp pose. That's I know, but... It's not just random bungee. I know, but, <laughs> but it's not being used for the slurp pose right now. Yeah, but... We should have some random it's bungees. It's sort of 
optimized to go on the slurp pose. Not I know, it is a... Uh, uh, all right, well, let's stick it on the front, see what you happens. You want me just to try and close it like this, but don't close it all the way? I think you're going to have gonna mixing close. water, and then it's going to be bad for all the... Cut. The other samples that are in there, which is... The potato. The potato? <laughs> the sea urchin. Oh, sea urchin. <laughs> sea potato. <laughs> sea potato. <laughs> I had mashed potatoes for dinner. They were very good. Mashed potatoes and pizza? Nope, mashed potatoes and cabbage. <laughs> mashed potatoes I, oh. and cabbage, Whoa. Yep. Yeah, it was an interesting plate. It was very Irish. <laughs> this is like, that's cool cannon right there. Vegetable mm -hmm. options are becoming limited. I was mm. thinking tonight, yeah. like, is it okay to eat this much cabbage? Because I'm <laughs> eating a lot of it. Is cabbage good for you? I don't think it's bad for you, and it's got probably a lot of insoluble fiber. Try to close? Yeah. I actually don't really want to know either way. Close I'm just going to pretend it's good for me. I think it is. I'm sure that many people traveling at sea would be in big trouble by now if cabbage was bad for you. So <laughs> oh, you're cabbage. Safe. It's like one yeah. of the staple last long vegetables. Yep. Yes. Only tell me the good things. Box is closed. At least it's not red What's cabbage. holding the scoop down? The other option was pizza. So it was definitely healthier oh, than what? pizza. What's holding the scoop down? The I think it's just rubber bands. Zip, yeah. awesome. <laughs> Zip tied Thanks, in. Annie. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it boosts heart protective antioxidants. Nice. I mean, well, it's kind go. of like a It little eases inflammation and it can help prevent heart disease. What, what's that line there on the porch on the that garbage. you're about to put it on? Is <laughs> that tied it down? Or is that, what? Is that bungee? Uh, the line that's underneath it? That's what's holding the weights on. Oh, it's yeah, we, we need those. Okay. Do you need those? Just stick a weight on top of it. Uh, what's that ring? It's not going to float away. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a rock. <laughs> <laughs> well... Rock. You gonna put it I down can't. Or? I can't talk yeah. about it anymore. <laughs> it is a rock. It's uh, so science, can we put it on the porch? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's on the porch. Hmm. We can kind of tuck it back in there on the porch. It's not gonna get stuck under the box. Well, if it gets stuck, that's probably a good thing. Yes. Yeah. Unless you want to open the box again. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. No more sampling. Is that okay? Love it. He loves it. That's what we love to hear. On porch. Okay. Did we explain what that was to those watching at home? I don't think so. That is a fossilized Try not to, try not to say, pull you. Uh, beaked whale skeleton, but just the beak part. And it is now the third one we found on this expedition. And one was found at uh, Johnson Atoll a couple years ago, or a year ago. And it's pretty amazing because as we just talked about, we're a tiny, tiny dot on this giant, giant seamount, and we keep coming across these things. So it means, A, that they are well-preserved, and B, that there's a lot of them. And you can see it's all black because it's covered with the same uh, iron manganese deposit. So it probably means it's Giving more been there quite a long time. What, Adam, what features of it makes you think it is a whale bone? Like, I guess when I look at it, it kind of looks like any kind of petrified or fossilized something, whether it's... Well, I mean, it certainly know. helps that we've seen a few of them now, um, but it, like when we look at it, like they... Uh, hold in your hand kind of look at it. Yeah, them. yeah, they have that kind of uh, wood, woody kind of Zoom grain it? to oh, them, okay. and... The, some we've seen have a bit of the Get bone the from the skull as well. Yeah, I'm going to take off in a second. Shallow. Okay, yep. Very, moving on, moving on. Please. Here we go. Sorry. <laughs> 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 just like, I'm good. You just so obviously nice appear closer <laughs> than they actually are. <laughs> are we zoomed in? Nope. <laughs> then <laughs> he's, still, he's eight meters up. It's not like he's going <laughs> to But are you in front then? Why is it so bright? 
Yeah, I'm in. I'm in front. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> 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 my my sonar <laughs> says danger. <laughs> it's been Come two out. hours. <laughs> Samantha, what? Hi. Um, how's our moving? <laughs> our moving is not happening yet. We're waiting for Herc to go in front of At Atlanta. Is our average good or not? Oh, that that moving. Uh, let me see. Let me crunch the numbers. So you weren't seeing. The sediment getting kicked up with True. the wave. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so, so wait, Don't worry, I'm writing it down wait, now. So that means that yeah. Atalanta isn't the problem because no, nothing is happening. It legit will uh -huh. kick up the dirt if you're close. <laughs> you're going to blame everything else. I'm saying eight meters isn't Butter. like on the bottom. Uh -huh. eight, eight meters is eight meters. Like eight meters. It's up there, it's, you know. I think the last, our last like watch would be our personal best, second, uh, which is like 300. Oh. Kinda. Yeah. That was 300. That was very good. Yeah, we... Right? So, so, so proud of us. Do you normally trend under the norm? Or <laughs> yeah, Way significantly under. under. But yeah, we have huh? the fear of, mis of missing out corals. Well, Adam is looking see, at every that's great and yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We stopped to look at everything. Yeah. And now you know what that feels like, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Completely normal. <laughs> Everything is fine now in the look, front row. Look at all that tether dangling down there. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> Coming up. Okay, right, Annie, answer cool. your question. We've gone 420 meters, and it's been a little over two hours. So we're That's good. I'm slightly better that. than our 200 meter an hour average. Yeah, <laughs> there we that's go. true. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But significantly under still every other watch's average of 250 meters. Yep. <laughs> Okay, Deb doesn't need to stuff. know that, Samantha. <laughs> yeah, but oh, sorry, we're trying to impress Deb. <laughs> no, I think that's it. <laughs> also, I, I think we're the only ones who actually keep track like this. <laughs> I think it's a badge of honor. You know, we're looking yeah, at everything. Absolutely. Looking at everything. That's true. Says the bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready to move? Oh, look, there's a Calophagus. Yes. Oh, yes, life. I'm ready. Yeah, we Let's can keep moving. Ready. I'm ready. Custino. I was waiting for the sign. Bridge nav. So I don't see the sign. <laughs> that's a <that's> sign. <laughs> we zoom in Three zero meters, meters two two five, please. <laughs> that was part of it, Adam, but it didn't turn into a thumbs up at the end. Okay. It's usually. <laughs> what <laughs> are we seeing? Cuskill. Cuskill. What's uh, that next little star there? Something that's three pronged next to the ophiroid. ophiroid? Oh, that's an ophiroid. But no, no, next to where? Uh, like left, uh, left of the ophiroid. Then. Oh, no. I saw that. Yeah. Oh, oh stick a poppy. This thing. That, oops. Yeah. Oh man, oh. too many things to look at. It. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're not gonna look at any of them. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have lost your privileges. <laughs> Sometimes I just shout things like out. You don't have to look at all of them. <laughs> There's an Umpalula down there. We don't have to look at it, but just noting what? that it is there. Acknowledging nope, its we're good. Right. Keep moving. I still want to see an acorn worm. Sometimes I ju I'm just acknowledging the existence of things. All right. We saw a few earlier today. Yeah. We can watch the footage back. It's true. Okay, team. We have one hour and 50 minutes to find another holotarian. Oh, I know. I want to see that holotherian. Another holotherian? A okay. big one. Paula, what? Uh, um, can we zoom on this? Me? Maybe yeah. another stick of pappies. Huh? No, that's a crinoid. <laughs> no, but... Oh, yeah, look at that covered with hydroids. Yeah. I will sample number. We're on sample number one. We're going for one, four, five. Okay, we're good. We can keep going. Kind of looks like that crinoid was uh, regrowing. Yep, yeah, yeah, that because the head was very so small, small compared comparison. To that. Yeah. yeah. Ship move coming underway. Pappy Pappies. Pappy Pappies. Such a fun name. Pappy Pappies. Yeah. <laughs> a question from our viewers: So, do you ever come across underwater volcanoes or thermal vents? This is when you were explaining oh, the pillow yeah. lavas. 
Yeah, so uh, for sure we do, but not in this neck of the woods. This, mm. These volcanoes have not been active for 30 to 80 million years, so they're cold and old. Um, <laughs> but Nautilus has done uh, plenty of work in more active volcanic systems. Uh, Loihi, which I can't remember the new name for Loihi at the moment. It's the newest Hawaiian volcano. Um, where else have they been recently? Next year, we're going to go to Vailulu'u. Yeah, Vailulu'u, that's uh, right. An American Samoa active volcanic system. Nice. Probably in the coming years, we'll get over to the Marianas. Um, and then personally, I've done lots of work in, oh, you guys also were in Galapagos, uh, Galapagos Correct. Spreading Center. Yeah. Um, that's all I can think of off the top of my head, but uh, yeah, we for sure, they're very exciting places to go. We also surveyed the um, fresh lava flow off of uh, the Big Island a couple yes, years ago. Yes, that's yeah. right. That was that was uh, so not underwater volcano, but we went right where the where the, yeah, where the new lava was coming yeah, in. Yeah, that was a, a going into the sea OET right there. OET Sewell cool. collab. Mm -hmm. It was still smoking and steaming, and, yep. and uh, we were looking to see how much inundation there had been uh, on the bottom. Uh, in July 2021, Louis Hisimount was renamed to Kama Ehua Kanaloa. Ah, thank you. So, you know, for the, our, like, Vailulu'u, the newly, um, so how long will we see, like, Vailulu'u, um, be hydrothermally active. Yeah, yeah. It'll it'll continue. So right there, in the middle of a move. it's a active volcano. It's it's has erupted recently. It will erupt again, and it's not the lava that comes out that drives those hydrothermal systems. It's the heat from the magma in the mm, crust. Okay. Uh, so the vents there will probably be continuously active. They may move around to different locations, but they'll be active hydrothermal activity there for the next you know hundreds or thousands of years right okay thank you what i'm interested in is to see what's north of ta'u where you had those recent earthquakes oh, oh yeah because yeah. that they're interpreted as magma movement in the crust so it could be there's some Not hydrothermal really. activity out there as well that would be interesting. Yeah, back home, uh, I know our people would be, would love uh, more information on that. Samantha, what's going on up there? <laughs> Everything good, friend bro? Fantastic. Uh, awesome. We were just figuring out a camera. We okay, to make a preset. Okay. We're underway. Ship's moving. We're zipping. Looking for sea pens. Awesome. This move is sponsored by the Ship Move Association of America. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Smart. Oh, did you give her? her? Uh, I actually took it off the table and I put it on the wall. Uh, oh, no, no, <laughs> oh. no, no, there's more. There's oh. more to compliment. Oh, oh. well, I, I kidnapped the post-it note because I loved it. And now it's the official Navigator post-it note. Oh, no, there's something even even better. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. So when does the tattoo artist arrive? <laughs> <laughs> I tried doing did it you today, but Samantha was in the... Mm. Paula, did you, uh, I'll distract did you write any postcards? Because I think, is it tomorrow that we're going to come close to the mail buoy? <laughs> to the mail buoy? <laughs> yeah, there's a mail buoy out here, and you can put uh, postcards in it. Mm -hmm. And almost, pick it up, I think, weekly. You. Wait, and then they send I want to write a postcard. Yeah, you guys yeah. get your postcards written. You don't even I'm have to have postage on this, because out here, they don't even care. So, yeah, That's get true. your postcards written, and then... Uh, I Absolutely. I think midday will be coming close to the mail buoy. Adam, exactly they're also gonna, at the main of midday. They're also going to drop off uh, new chocolate chip cookies, right? Oh, I hope. Yeah. You just never <laughs> know. You can't trust. Uh, going out uh, is almost. pretty certain, but coming <laughs> in is <laughs> yeah. But if we don't have any mail, it'll be oatmeal raisin. <laughs> yeah. Oat <laughs> so mail, write your postcards. Oatmeal so. raisin. We need to write the postcards. <laughs> yeah. Oatmeal. So he mm -hmm. said. Oatmeal oh, no. raisin. Oh. <laughs> 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 Hmm. 
Wait, is whatever you're talking about the reason that Paula came in late last night and gave me a chocolate and then walked what? away? No, that was, <laughs> that was straight from my heart, Samantha. Okay. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Unrelated. Oh, you're here. That was just an act <laughs> yeah, of <chocolate>. kindness. <laughs> well, it was an act of mercy as well because I was falling asleep mapping. <laughs> oh, don't hold Dev. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. That's almost like a prerequisite. <laughs> mapping sure and I mapping. Slept through some mapping in my yeah. my time as well. The map Monday. of map. Hmm. From Noah. Mm. Gotta get closer to see. Looks pretty from Noah need to me. Yeah. I think so. Ooh. From Noah whip. Thanks. Bridge nav. Sure. Let's add another three zero meters to two two five. So how frequent does this MA association give their awards? Or do we need to submit our reviews beforehand? <laughs> or to well, the, the buoy system, <laughs> the buoy mailing system? No, the mail buoy is something totally different. They don't, that's not even run by SMA. <laughs> <laughs> no affiliation with SMA. <laughs> no affiliation. Yeah, that's I often I feel like you guys are, are skeptical of the mail buoy. It's a real thing. I've got my postcards written. I don't written. know. I'm really gullible, and you fooled me in the past. I almost. <laughs> I think for a split second there, me I once. believe you. And then <laughs> it's not a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> really? But you. But it's a. It's a constant. Um, uh, I believed it. It. it, it you have to do it. Old I wanted to believe. Yeah. I got really excited. Me too. What, what kind of traditions? Huh? What kind of traditions? Similar, like a bucket of steam. What? <laughs> what? Table what? Yeah. What? Wait, what? tell us more. Bucket of steam? <laughs> go down to the engine room and get a bucket of steam. <laughs> <laughs> and then what? You bring it back. <laughs> and then that's when the mail shows up? <laughs> no, it's just like the mail buoy. It's oh, like a, a, a uh, tradition, old tradition. It's like a, a, tradition. Like a fun... An old Nautical tradition. You gotta get the bucket of steam. Okay. A fun yeah. trick. What's the cable stretcher? The cable stretcher Same or a bucket stretch. of prop wash. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Gotta get a fresh bucket of prop wash. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fresh. It's not good. Ooh, what's the cable stretcher though? <laughs> Same. Same we'll send you out for it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what am I missing? That's when you pull it. You pull a cable in and it's three feet short. You say, okay, uh, oh, we gotta get the cable stretcher out. Get the cable out. stretcher. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Send you someone go. to go find the cable. Because it's a lot of work yeah. to have to pull that cable back cable out. Yeah. Yeah. Pull a longer down one the back in. Yeah. Room to get the cable stretcher or the bucket <laughs> of steam. Okay. And then they go and they ask and they're like, yeah. uh, I'm looking for the cable stretcher. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. They're, it's a very expensive <laughs> tool at the hardware store. <laughs> okay, got it. On Nautilus, the other one is that you have to go to the engine room to take your turn on the rowing machine to power the ship. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not the engine room, the gym. Oh, uh, yeah. okay, this looks like Amphidicella. Seems like no, we're spoiling all someone. the fun, though, to just give it out. To yeah, I was going to say, we just... <laughs> <laughs> well, I had my fun with the mail buoy for five minutes. And then <laughs> well, let me tell you, you could have taken it much further, Jules and I would have continued to, write that to believe you. Yeah, I didn't want to make I you. was already thinking about who I would write to. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Digital so. postcard. Oh, People don't really write postcards anymore. Sad. Yeah. We could. I mean, email used to feel a little bit like a mail buoy because you'd have to write your email and then once a day it'd be sent yeah. off the ship and come back and you'd receive <laughs> email. So a little bit like a mail buoy. That sounds great. I mean, this it is it's true that bad. the connectivity on this ship is amazing, Impact but I was doing tech support 
for my daughter at home <laughs> today. <laughs> She's like, the printer won't print. I'm like, all right, well, let's just switch to this other network. <laughs> Ooh, another really large Saco Calyx. Saco Calyx. So we used to only get GPS fixes a couple times a day. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> when all the satellites, when you happen to get a satellite that came over. Yeah, a lot less satellites up there. Yeah. Bridge nav. Tell us the stories when you were hunting whales out there. <laughs> 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 <North Atlantic>. um. <laughs> well, yeah, that was back in the days when we'd, we'd Let's only add another have 30, three zero meters to two five. You would only get, you would only get. Oh, wasn't like there fifteen minutes of, oh you know? Wasn't there some sort of call system radio. that was like hopscotched across ships yeah. so everyone mm -hmm. would hear your conversation? Well, well, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What, yes. what happens when it's you're in an area segment. without ships? You would get radio amateurs that would volunteer to... That would be a to, relay station? do a relay. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's when ham radio was popular, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's when ships had radio <laughs> officers. Yeah. Looks like Umbalula down there. Whereabouts? Oh, jeez. <laughs> so are some <laughs> popular... Ham radio sites out there. That's a crinoid. Yeah. 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 <coughs> I'm, a, I'm a ham radio person. There yeah? What's your call? Bamboo coming up. Alpha Fox Trot 6 November Ooh. Whiskey. <laughs> Alpha, what is Alpha Fox Trot 6 November Whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't spell anything clever. <clears throat> you don't get the pick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you get. I think is that one with two long branches? Yeah, I think it's one. Like that. Bamboo. Bamboo. Caratoy said nay. Divining rod. Um, and then there's a metallogorgia with a squat lobster behind it. Can you zoom in, Dave? Can we zoom in at the branch, please? Oh, and some tunicates also. You can't see very good there. Uh, are the tunicates uh, separate from the corals? Separate, yeah. Do we need to get a different angle? Yeah. Ooh, it looks like there might even be a stolen a friend on the rock behind it. Also, the polyopicon is no longer with us. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, no need to note that as Rest living. That's hurting my ear. I think it's you. 75. The temperature did go up. The water temperature went up and sound its way back down again. Oh, did it? Yeah. But the the van temperature hasn't changed, has the it? The temperature went up a degree or something. It did. Okay. Yeah. Another one of those things I'm trying to keep track of. I think it's internal. I think I see a node right there. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's not a node, but a mm. polyp. Look at that. All right, so there. I think it could be nodal. It's so hard to tell. <laughs> I can't tell. Time to zip. OK. But those watching at home, remember I mentioned the botrioidal texture. You can see it up here now. <laughs> lumpy, lumpy iron manganese crust. All right. <coughs> Got to go. Got to go. So it's just me that's hot? Yeah, Meow. it's uh, 72 in here, and it was 71, so... We had a little spike in uh, chilled water temperature 15 minutes ago. So. But it may be warmer up there because you're all those screens it's probably dumping some heat. Well, it it sort of changes, you know. There's like different drafts that kind of roll through here. I'm in a cold spot. I have draft directly down. 
Hence my face jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so I am I'm not warm. I am also chilled. What's the fan speed on that one by you, Samantha? Uh, 70 foot, well, well it, No, the fan speed on your, you know how to see that? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Oh, so this was temperature then. Oh, There's a little if fan. I hit the fan button? Yeah, just briefly. One. Okay, that's good. Okay. Adam, do we have I just get cold. subcategories for the botryoidal texture? No. Okay. Is this still considered that even though the, the, the pattern is larger in size? Yeah, the, uh, see this is why it would be very hard to make that classification because there's some botryoidal texture, there's some, there's some, but the big lumps are something else and then some rocks don't Ooh. have it, you know, so. That's actually very interesting. Oh. Pal is my favorite. <laughs> I'm pretty stoked about that sea star we got earlier. Yeah, me too. too. I think it could have been a slime star. Yeah, that's one of the um, <coughs> IDs from chat, slime star. in the Atalanta cam, you can see we just in this little patch of sediment. Mm -hmm. But we should be getting pretty close to this thing flattening out a little bit. Yes, so when we get there. Yeah. What are you thinking? So what's the what's the wind? Thirteen knots coming from the northeast. Oh great. Okay. So let's just try and um, go towards three then. Yeah. I think that'll be fine. This is Halop Terrace, I believe. I think we're not excited about this one. <laughs> we we are we love this one, but it is not the one we are hoping to collect. Thank you. <laughs> that is Halop Terrace. The one we're looking for looks a little bit like Umbalula. Okay. Um, how do I explain this? <laughs> Same as white, though? Do you have a photo of it? Yeah, I do. What, on what screen? Um, on it's on my laptop, laptop, but let me pull it up. <coughs> Pathy Pathies. Okay, I have it on my screen now. Are you on That's Psy? the still cam yep. screen, whatever that is. Okay. Oops. I don't, that's, uh, that's um, power screen. Oh. Could have fooled me. There are a bunch of sea bends. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh, nope. You're about to get your What's the name seed. of the species of yules? Huh? The one, the sea bend you're looking for? Kofo Belemnon. Hmm. Oh. Uh, Jules, what does the computer in front of you say on it, label wise? Uh, no, this is different. I don't think it's in the... Kay. This is a ROV computer. Samantha, I have, yeah. Wait. I no, have it's the called, same picture as It's called you. still cam, Samantha. Oh, okay. still cam. Uh, oh, we do have still cam. Sorry. 
there. There it is. Robert. Yep. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Team effort. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. Okay, so when you guys are a little farther behind the ship, I'll put in a move headed. You want to start moving over now, Adam, or keep yeah, going I up a little so. bit? Yeah, I think so. I think it's just going to get flat. Let's do one more move. We zoom in, Dave. Now everything's going to look like that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Power of suggestion. Yeah. Never mind. I'm kind of surprised we haven't come across some more biodense area. Yeah, I am too. Maybe we should keep going with this direction, Samantha, until we Great. really exhaust the slope. Okay, I was going to suggest that anyway to give us a better angle. Going over to three, so perfect. What were we um, expecting to see? What were you guys expecting to see? Giant coral garden. <laughs> Is it due to maybe current flow, depth? Like well, the before? reason I kind of expected it is this side of the seamount should be getting the dominant kind of current flow in the region. Right. And it's a steep slope, which these organisms seem to like. And that was just the, the notion, the hypothesis. Bathy pathies. Excuse me, please. Why are we looking to sample that specific C pen? Um, because we don't have many, many collected, just in general. I think it was requested as well, right? Scientist ashore. Yeah, uh, Steve Oscovich wanted us to sample it oh, because we okay. don't have many. So he would like to do some DNA analysis, morphological also. How long does it take to do a DNA analysis on a coral species? I think it really depends. Okay. A lot of the time you'll send off a DNA sample to like an outside party who right. will sequence it and then send you the information back. Um, Make it sound fun, an outside party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a barbecue, actually. <laughs> That'd be fun, you should have a barbecue. I have no idea how long it takes. Yeah, when are we going to fire up those grills? Well, I think they do u use them. There's been, maybe not, there's been like grilled vegetables and stuff. But I think on the transit back, we'll have a, Ooh, a okay. little barbecue party. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. That's the good news. The bad news is it'll be grilled cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> Which oh. could be good. It really brings out the sweetness. So I really love cabbage rolls, which they've made on here before, but they haven't made them in a long time. Yeah. Cabbage rolls. Yeah. If they have all this cabbage, I think they should be making some cabbage rolls. I'm with you on that. I, I love cabbage Ooh, rolls. Ooh, that sounds good. Anatoly had a, a very good... Yeah, Way they haven't had them in a while. Oh wait, it's not only cabbage, is there meat inside? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, with nice. tomato sauce. It's not just cabbage. Ooh. Yeah, very good. It's like a cabbage burrito. Or yeah. More like a <laughs> cabbage enchilada, probably. <laughs> yeah, a cabbage enchilada. Can we zoom in, Dave? This one's waiting for a squat lobster <coughs> to come. Mm -hmm. oh. I think there is. Oh, yeah. No, no. It already has There's a two. squat lobster. There's two. <laughs> it's like it's got its fill. Getting colada? Yeah. I haven't seen a chrysogorgid without a squat lobster in quite some time. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay, 
So okay. the squat lobster chooses this specific coral species. 